Today I want to talk about the dilemma of the Skinner machine because it's a very simple mechanism if you understand it but very tricky to set it up so it works properly. So I've shown two different ways to get energy from a spinning weight or using a spinning weight. And the more you understand how you have to set them up to be over unity, the more they look like the same method. So the first, me first method is this spins and it wants to move the frame. But in order for this weight to not slow down, then the center has to move in the opposite direction, sort of like this. So as this comes around, all the force is this way, and now it's going this way, it has to be held here for a quarter of a turn, and then it can move. And then when it gets here, it has to be held here for a quarter of a turn, and then it can move. So that way, the center is not following the weight, it's going in the opposite direction of the weight. So the second method, which seems more like the Skinner method, is when you move the center in the same fashion, so it's actually aided by the centrifugal force. So you have to almost hold this in one place and then move it rapidly when the centrifugal force is in the right spot. So this, uh, well, the centrifugal force machines have a particular appeal to me because if the speed is unlimited, then theoretically the power output is also unlimited. So, normally you would say, well, I'm a smart guy. I'll just hook it up like this. Bam! Free energy. But it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Or everyone would do it. So, when people try out the Skinner machine, they, they do the thing where they move a chair, four-legged chair, or something like this. And it seems very prospect at first, but then when you hook it up to some kind of timing mechanism, it doesn't seem to work. Where'd my free energy go? Well, your free energy went over here. That's where it went. So what you need is something sort of like this. Now, I just stuck this together for a demonstration, and it's not a good demonstration, so you'll have to forgive me. But you see this, I didn't get it right. This is the opposite of this, but they're not connected together. So just a simple crank and rod would work perfectly. Now this is this is not set up well enough for me to demonstrate properly, but I've had it set up before, you know, and it works. So what you need is you need this to be perfectly synchronized with this, but they can't be mechanically coupled together. So that's the dilemma of the Skinner machine. Because Basically, when it's coupled together like this or any other way, you don't get free energy from the centrifugal force because this is touching. So the rule to remember is no touching. This rotational part cannot touch the timing mechanism and I showed it previously where you have an output where you wouldn't want to touch the output, but it's similar. That this wants to be basically free to move back and forth. So in a sense, the weight 
doesn't know what the timing mechanism is doing. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. So they work in tandem together, and they need to be perfectly synchronized because, let's just take this off because this sucks. Let's not fool ourselves. What can happen if this is spinning along nicely with your awesome timing mechanism, See what I did there? If it goes, if it follows it, that, then we lose all our energy. So it always has to stay in perfect synchronicity, but it can't be mechanically coupled to it. And that's the dilemma. So if this weighed, you know, 100 tons, we could keep going faster and faster, and we could get lots of free energy, but we need to understand how to build our timing mechanism. 